listening to the Holy Spirit when we're living in rebellion or when we're at odds with the fellowship of God, just like I talked about with Adam and God? When that happens, in our psyche, it can create this sense of instability, uncertainty. I don't know what, about you, but when I know I've done something wrong and I want to keep it hidden, there's just something about how I get skittish. My insecurity increases. And, and, and when I'm not who I need to be, I can run when I'm not being chased. Have you ever watched a good movie where someone has done something wrong and they tried to hide it and they tried to hide it, but the more they try to hide it, the more it's obvious that something's wrong. And, and you've got the music and you've got the drama and it's as if every, you're, you're just waiting for something to happen. And, and if a paper falls to the floor, you think, oh, And, and I'm telling you, those dramatic movies, those producers or directors or whoever, they know how to get you, even though you're in your living room, just on edge like you're ready to run, even though no one is chasing you. Well, um, courage is not the absence of fear. But it's submission of fear to the need of the moment. It's responding to the moral mandate of a current situation. It's entrusting God with consequences. It gives us the confidence that comes from the virtue of righteous living and faith. And this says that Rather than running when no one's chasing you, if we live a life with character and integrity, we can instead, in contrast, be like a lion. Not necessarily mean and nasty, but not having to worry about our foes because we've got a strength. Now, our strength comes from our connection with God. It's not that I think I'm so strong and I'm such a wonderful guy. It's that I know I'm not, but I have trusted God's grace to help me to start over, to be forgiven, and so knowing that my strength is linked to the strength of Christ in the cross, to the strength of the Holy Spirit being at my side, and that now by grace, I am able to walk around in my life with a sense of, of, of I don't have to be afraid. I've got, a, I've got a strength. And so in contrast, that the wicked flee even when no one is pursuing them and the, the, the righteous can be like a lion. Probably not many of us feel like a lion. I, I, I don't think a lion even thinks about it. I don't think a lion goes around and acts like a bully. I think a lion just is who he is. Well, in Christ, we can be who we are. And maybe not even be aware. But nevertheless, instead of having a spirit of timidity and fear and guilt and shame, we believe that what God says he means, and we just prayed, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Wow. If you are forgiven, if you know that you are living a life in faith, then guess what? You no longer need to live in fear of your own failure, of your past that you wish you could undo. 
Because this grace thing is real. A wise person respects fear. Fear is not necessarily the enemy in and of itself. As a matter of fact, fear unites you to being human. Humans are afraid. Humans fear. Okay? That's okay. Fear has its place. Fear has its purpose. Fear causes you to run when someone is chasing you. Or, if you know that you're up to it and that you can stand up and use your strength to fight back. But, the problem with sin is, it doesn't teach us to fear as a human when we, um, when we um, see a threat. The problem with sin is it causes us to fear even when there is nothing to be afraid of. Sin erodes our confidence. Sin plays games with our, with our mind and with our heart. So the wise person realizes that fear is part of the human experience and when they have fear, they can still be heroic. They can still be brave. We can still overcome. We can still be confident. Because what do we, as the body of Christ, do with our fear? We admit it. We declare it. And we surrender it to the strength of God. And then, our fear is not commanding our action. And that is a truly wonderful thing. I read a wonderful article, and it was on fortitude. I, I was looking for confidence, I found fortitude. And it was, it was definitely Catholic, man. It was Catholic all the way. And it was, and it was so cool to hear from a kind of a little different tradition, but still in the Christian context. And it was talking about the cowardly versus the fearless versus the faithful. It is so. The cowardly person is paralyzed from acting due to fear. When we allow fear to command our actions, we become cowards. All of us have fear, but do we allow the fear to command our actions? So that we're paralyzed, we can't act like we know is right. So the cowardly become paralyzed and fear commands what they do. But then fearlessness, listen to this, is even worse than cowardliness. Because the fearless man is worse off than the coward because the fearless man is not even aware of the dangers around them. They're not afraid, but they should be. They don't have any wisdom, but they're going anyhow. They're not looking for thinking through anything. They simply are not using facts. They're not using stimuli. They're just going forward no matter what. At least the coward knows there's danger. So, the fearless man not only lacks courage, but does not realize his deficiency and does not head off trouble. Well, I want to share with you an illustration that contrasts these two things. Do you remember King Saul in the Old Testament? He was the first king of the Jewish people. And he began really well. He got the popularity of the people and everything, but his impatience his intolerance, uh, his self-centeredness 
overcame his better judgment. And as a result, God said, you don't have a future for your son. And King Saul became so insecure, he thought that everyone was out to ruin him or harm him. He was living in this imaginary world where, where he had to defend himself and he had to not trust anybody. And, 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 and so because he was so unstable, because he was so enraged, they would bring in musicians to calm his soul. And David was a shepherd boy. And David was a harpist. And so they brought in this young, innocent, clean-faced person, David. And David would play the most soft <laughs> melodies. And Saul's rage would go down for a while. I'm not against good music. I think good music can calm the soul. But if you continue to live a life based on imagining as if it's real, what is not real? Music's just not gonna not gonna help you. At least not forever. So King Saul, in anger, looked at this young David and he threw a javelin at him. And it happened more than once. What do you think David did? The wicked flee when no one is chasing them. Well, the righteous run! <laughs> and it's not because of a lack of confidence, it's because of sanity. And so David did that. David, on the other hand, praise God, David had an opportunity to get, get Saul. Saul would hunt him down. Saul would use his armies to hunt him down. David was hiding in the cave. Uh, Saul literally went in to go to the bathroom, and he cut off a little bit of his robe to prove that he could have killed him and didn't. David had confidence that God had told him he'd be the next king, but he wasn't going to do anything inappropriate to make that happen. How cool and how wonderful is that? David was a man who trusted God. And when David did mess up, God was sure to help him to face it and to realize that now that I'm forgiven, I can live the life I need to live. So I want to tell you something, people. This is just good, common wisdom. If someone's chasing you, run! If no one is, the statement.